I think this chair has seen its better days. The what? The chair has seen its better days. Oh. Oh. And that thing is all loose, the dial in. Chad Bills. It's a beautiful set of white, blue-looking trucks out back. <laughs> That's fire sale going on. Where, where, where did those come from? What's that? All, all the white trucks? Are those ours? With the yeah. Yeah? Well, okay. Yeah. No, no. I know what you're talking about. Uh, no, I was serious. There was, uh, there's like four or five. Three of them are. Okay, yeah. Are those mine, the ones I bought? Can it get any hotter in here? Yeah. Can it get any hot? I didn't bring my son over. Yeah. Are you having a hot flash? I am, I am dripping. Well, you, you and I are always on opposite ends of the thermometer. Right now? All right, boys, what are we doing? Joey. Yeah. <coughs> Where do you want to start? Start from the top. <laughs> what, do you, what do you consider in top? Uh, what's your order of the top? Capital salaries. Salaries. Salaries and personnel. DPW staffing salaries. Besides 
meetings, phone calls, um, getting stuff ordered for them guys to do the work. Um, I'm all over the place. I can't dedicate myself to a job for a long period of time. I'm either being pulled away, something breaks the municipal building, things like that. And that's what I've been doing with the part-time staff there. Uh, and then I'm starting to run short on hours during the week to get work done. I think uh, what you've seen around the municipal building now and through the last year with the projects and stuff uh, was the reason why I was looking for the part-time staff to try to get some Gets more hours out here to have the personnel here. I'm running short on sometimes I'm looking at one guy here, and when we start using up vacation time between me and Barry, 25 days each, there's one guy here, uh, which is unsafe for anybody who's working out and, and things like that. One guy, you mean? One person staff in the DPW. Like part timer? They could be a part timer, yes. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Thursday is going to be a prime example. I restarted my, um, my second semester of uh, classes for certified public works manager. Barry is already scheduled today as last week. Two part timers going to be here. Thankful Thursday is both eight hour days for them. So there will be two guys here. But and the part timers are certified in all the equipment? What's that? They're certified on all of our Kyle can, Kyle can operate the machines. Uh, Dan can operate the mason trucks and pick up trucks. And I'm going to have them being putting in the playground mulch out here in the, in the park. So they'll be able to handle that job. Okay. Uh, are in the, what I got listed there, one of the, one of the positions and I was looking for the positions to be filled with part-time staff. They're already trained. <coughs> they know the town. They know the job. So that makes it it makes it a smooth transition where we're hiring off the street. And my my feeling, and I don't know if the committee's feeling is, the thought was to fill with the part-time staff that knows the job, knows how to do the work, and then if we wanted to fill them positions with the part-time staff, fill them off the street. So it would, it would be a smooth transition, less training uh, of them people to move into full-time positions in the PPW. Now, in the, in the salary budget and stuff there, I did a couple pages there, but I think the second page, is, do they have a copy of mine there? In the second one, I broke it down more or less what they're on the top of the page, what the annual salaries would be. Myself, uh, equipment operator, CDL truck driver is back, and then the first full-time position, which is equipment operator, CDL operator, at twenty dollars an hour, is salary for if that was from January one through December thirty-first, at twenty dollars an hour. Second full-time position, no CDL, able to operate small equipment stuff like that, at seventeen dollars an hour. Part-time employees right now are making $14 an hour, and I know we were kicking around as I got there, 27 hours a week, 30 weeks. We were talking earlier about taking over the lawn mowing thing. We know that's not going to happen this year, so that there is more or less a viewpoint if the two positions are filled. If they're not, um, somewhere along the line here, either to keep the full-time staff on and stuff like that. Down at the bottom there is the overtime salaries. Now, this was all based on 200 hours, which at the overtime rate for 200 hours is extravagant. I used the 200-hour mark was last winter, winter 2014-15, the part-timers averaged about 180 to a couple of them had almost 200 hours of time just snow work because it was that time of year. Mm -hmm. So that there showed probably the most that we would have to expect in a year for potential <laughs> overtime and for part-time work. So that's that's where I just come up with that 200 hours. 200 hours of overtime on full-time employees 
probably probably wouldn't happen because you fall into the regular work shift and stuff like that on some of these snowstorms. So it was just a number to give me some kind of figures there for the overtime and or the part-time staff's um, um, salaries at the max down there as you go through. And then it got the winter staff there, CDL drivers. And I, the reason why I'm looking to do CDL drivers for $20 and non-CDL $17, They've been at fourteen dollars an hour now for four years, and just to, to give a small barometer here, Franklin Township was looking to hire off the street last winter, eighteen dollars an hour, walking in. Harmony was between sixteen and eighteen dollars an hour, looking for part-time people to drive trucks to plow snow. Our guys are with have at least a year experience and know our town. One of them, Jeff, has worked part time as on the winter staff since nineteen ninety nine. He's five staff. And he's been put on the part time staff right now. I got him working twenty seven hours a week all year long. Thanks. The other thing is for me is that you're going to hire a full-time guy, for a second guy. I definitely like to have the CDL guy to put in. Absolutely. And, and to, to, to put it out there is uh, I have candidates, and, and, and Jeff would be the candidate. Besides his having the CDL, he brings a lot more to the table. He was in the construction carpenter business. He's the one that's done most of the improvements. Mm -hmm. building here. He's, a, he's an asset. Joe, <clears throat> if you got the two full-time employees, would you still need the part-time employees? Uh, no, wouldn't need part-time employees because okay. I'd be gaining 26 hours a week out of them two guys. Uh, and then uh, I can the part-time. The only, the only thought would be into the part-time because of, uh, and if we decided to get back into the grass cutting, is to have part-time staff do the long mound, but limit their weeks and things like that, and limit them to 27 hours a week. So that would offset the salary of the two new full-time. So I, what, what I'm, would offset? Well, you're adding two, but you're removing the 22,000 for the part-time, right? Yes, <coughs> yes, that would be because unless we decided down the road, I don't know what the committee would like to do, I know we kicked it around, is to get into the grass cutting again, and then I would, like I said, I would, I would consider part-time staff for that, so we, the full-time staff, can continue to rebuild uh, storm drains, uh, we got the mulch coming, we take care of baseball fields, even the part-time staff can take care of, take some of that off. We can work on construction work, road work, things of that. How can, you know, oh, sorry. How can we get on the schedule, like a maintenance of our ground, like the, you know, I've been going back and forth on the uh, on the garbage over at Dumont. Mm -hmm. Is that something that would be part of the DPW schedule, or you need part-time people for that? Well, I think I think something like that with part-time there. And I talked to Bob Betcherson uh, today. He has Troop 63 on a call as needed, and he's driving around checking these areas, and he explained to me that he has them on as needed to get out there to do this. Mm. Right. So I it. just think the winter months is tough for them to get out there yeah, well, for that. <coughs> we could talk about this as a committee later, but mm -hmm. to me personally, the way it looks right now, it's like an embarrassment to the township. Not, not saying you have anything to do with it. It has yeah, nothing to do no, with you. No, this is just my opinion that we have garbage hanging from the trees. We have bottles all along the curb. There's garbage all over the place there. So I don't think this model is going to work to have somebody call. It shouldn't get to that point, is my opinion on it. So, I mean, I think there's some, something we have to do to put it on, a, on a, some kind of maintenance schedule, even in other areas in the town. And I know I talked to Dave uh, Barreto even about the malls and the garbage at the malls, too. The most, the most. Most guys do it themselves. Yeah, so Dave's gonna, to Dave's gonna himself. talk to them as a zoning officer to take care of the malls. But um, I don't know if anybody else has an opinion on. Has anybody been there and seen it? I saw it. Mm -hmm. and I, 
with vets and with setting up with the Boy Scouts to come through and do it? I mean, is it from this past winter? Is it from the spring? Is it from the summer? Is it from the winter I, I we think, just had? I think there could be a lot of residual there. What happens when things get green and leafy and stuff? It hides it. Right. It really does. Because the long, long the farm the is up there, it grows in. Because it goes all the way back through the field all the way to the, yeah. the next area yeah, from what I saw. Like so like that. That. Yeah. It's, 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 I think it's been residual build up over the years. Right. Right. It's not doing much. It just gets to that point. Yeah. 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 Can we maybe cut some of that down so it's not catching it? That's the other thing. Fire and stuff like that that catches the thing. It's maybe to get it turned around. Who farms that field? Uh, <coughs> not the same thing? No. Is that Henders? Is that Henders? Yeah. You see if he has a brush hog, they'll level that vegetation right there. And could, you know. could be a possibility, or maybe <coughs> just take it out. The roadside mower out there and knock it off. Yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to do it. Get that debris cleaned up first. The mower will be doing the shred that, and making that stuff more airborne. Yeah, they're going out next Thursday, next, yeah, next Saturday. Saturday. They're, they're off school, and he's got. They got Troop 63 will be out there Tuesday. Okay. They already picked up the vest and the bags and everything. That's all going on. So then, once they get done out there, then we can see where we stand. What's the time frame? If Bob has the money for monthly or whatever. I don't think you need to send people out there every so often. Some kind, of, some kind of schedule. I don't know what it might be. Thousands uh, of dollars of clean communities money. How much is in there? Do you know the balance? I, I have to go get the uh, AFS. Thirty, forty. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You should use it's perfect. Perfect right. for that. We, we we used to distribute it max <laughs> five hundred bucks every clip. Yeah. You know, it's a couple hundred bucks for these Any community. community yeah. Hundred fifty. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You can do up to five hundred for each. Oh, it's a great way to get. Yeah, and I think that's that's all fine. Just I think it's got to get on some kind of schedule. That's all I'm saying. How we do it, if you want to do it through, you know, volunteers, that's fine. But it should be on some kind of schedule. Some kind of maintenance schedule. Yeah. yeah. Well, you touch base with Bob. We've already talked about it. Okay. So that's, that'd be no problem. Cool. Thank you. Um, leaf pickup program? Mm -hmm. Is that in here? Like uh, service wise? I don't have the time, but I've got to have the staff to do it. And it's that the part timers that worked out, um, that, that worked out. That's not cutting people down or. Or whatever to, to make it, it's got to make it tough. Last year, what was that in turn? I mean, that was the pilot year. We we're learning. We went to uh, Lopat to figure things out. I think our estimate we took in we took in about 300 cubic yards of leaves. We were able to truck them right over to the drop off Rivers Edge and Harmony Township ourselves instead of making a central dump inside pack that cup here which saved us money that way. Uh, during the week, I sent the guys out. The, the busiest time uh, was after a weekend. We, they spent a Monday, uh, three, four guys on a Monday and Tuesday, uh, probably about three weeks to clean up. During the week, we had sporadic. It ended up being like going through the areas, designated areas for about two hours a day. Just How many man hours time. total? Do you well, th you take you take a, a week or so. I, what I could do is I could just print it out. I got it. I don't have that figure there, but I have a sleep collection. How many man hours? I could give you a figure for it. Yeah, I, I think they all need to see it. And and that includes that included, that included trucking it over and the guy <coughs> truck it over all the pile of the leaves. So we we drop off all this debris. Do we partake in any of the mulching of it? No. No, no, nothing comes back in terms of material. They, they take care of the mulching of it at their, whatever they do, make sure the pot soil and okay. stuff like that. And, and how much do we offset with our recycling and or clean communities? How much of, do you know how much? 
I don't think we'll realize that number until the next recycling budget because I got the figures, we got the, the cost of what that goes in. That goes against our, uh, towards our tonnage or our yardage of recycling for the next round. The, the 300 yards yes. goes up and we get credit. Yeah, we don't, we haven't realized that. We're not going to yes. realize that though. To the next go around, yeah, yeah. But, but that that replenishes our recycling grant that comes in. Yeah. It, get, it gets us a little more money. It'll be an addition to it. Yes, but what, what I want to also understand from a budget perspective, let's say it takes you 300 hours, how much are we offsetting uh, with our clean communities? If you want to prepare for the next time, I just want to, you know, these guys mm -hmm. need to see what is this thing costing us? Is it, is it a service that we should continue? Uh, you know, and we need to know the parameters of it. Okay. I, I, I think you need to take the revenue out. You just need to assume that there is a soft benefit of recycling dollars. But just from, from Joe's perspective, how many man hours are we, are we logging and, and what is the offset from, from the clean community? Joe, some of this equipment here, you have small equipment purchases. Is that stuff that was lost in the fire? Or is that in the yes, some, some of that, but some of the small equipment purchases uh, will be also um, some additional equipment. Now, I think I had an update or upgrade on uh, the brush tipper, the, the line striker and stuff. Yes. Is that under my capital stuff? Yeah. So which of the ones on the capital expenditures are in insurance coverage? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, and the brush shipper was in the garage, right? Yeah, the striper was in the garage and stuff. Compressors? Um, I, don't, I don't have that sheet with me, so I have to just run through that for me. Line oh, shot. okay, I see it. Yeah, the line striper machine will be replaced. Um, the uh, the shop air compressor, that, that was going to be an addition. That was going to be in the main garage at the shop press and the shop drill press. That that was all additional stuff. We don't have that stuff. Right. We don't have that stuff. Which stuff is going to be potential just, insurance just the, replacement? Uh, Insurance-wise, the uh, paint line striping machine yeah. will be a replacement uh, item. Um, the... Uh, Brush, or we lost the, the uh, chipper. Our chipper or wood chipper or brush chipper. Uh, that was on my main capital expenditures up the top there. Uh, that was uh, lost. Uh, lawn, lawn mowing equipment there, is, that was all gone except for we kept one of the front line mowers to take care of foreclosed properties that the realtors and stuff weren't taken care of until we could chase them down. Um, the other than other than that, there's nothing nothing else that was lost in the fire. The, the stuff that we lost was stuff that we had to move truck coming to replace the one that was lost. Uh, so everything else wasn't due to the replacement. Bill has some questions in his email. Um, is this something that we're going to take up, or is he going to give an answer at another time? He asked about 26,000 to jump from the park maintenance. What's that? From Bill Canyon. He sent an email to everybody. I put in, we're going to get that number. Exact number by the end of this month, March 31st, for after the mowing contract. Um, last year. 43,000 I should for mowing, wasn't it? Some of that was put towards the school. 
Yeah, I know the overall Ron Mullen yeah, contract was 46000 yeah. but uh, I think that's been broken down. 24360 this was last year's so numbers, 24360 I put in, just put in, I put in 20, going to school. Uh, I'm not following the, the contract last year. And then 40, 40, was 24. The contract is 46,000 for Mullen. It should build it down to 24,000 town. 20, 20,000 towards the school portion mm -hmm. and 40,000 for the municipal portion. Figuring it would come in around 60. I thought I heard somebody say that they thought it would bid a little low last year, but maybe not. We'll, we'll know exactly by the end of the month. I can plug in the correct numbers. Right. But last year's bids come in. Low bidder was forty six thousand, and we had other bids fifty eight, uh, sixty, sixty five, or sixty nine thousand out of three three bids that we had. That, that's how far I think even one came in at seventy five thousand. Yeah. On the big stack, and along with this one here, we had we listed all the properties, and we asked for a per a charge per week for each location. So the Stortville Middle School was listed, and the, the vendors have to put what it costs that week to mow that seven hundred dollars or whatever. The Greenwich Elementary School is saying the municipal properties, the municipal park. Stecker's Park, they have to list what it costs to mow that location. And then we just multiply it by the weeks of mowing. It's really not a 26,000 increase then, it's just the way I broke it up. And I think last year, Bob Morrison had me taking it from Joe's budget, um, the, the streets and roads L and A. He had we took some of it from the sewer trust fund, which I don't understand why that would be. The run pump stage, the sewer pump part stage it? is part of it. Okay, so, so we can break that out yeah. um, when we know the exact number. So you know, right now this is kind of all we know at this point. Number nine, nine spring fall bolt garbage pickup. That's good enough to do spring fall. Spring and fall clean up once a week, and once a week. We use uh, yeah, the it's under my impression the dumpsters and stuff, clean communities money uh, was expended to, to do that. So You're asking about the salaries. The salaries, well I, I've been putting part well. One, uh, Barry's worked it, I don't work it, and uh, part timers work. I schedule part timers to work it. Is that Friday? We do a Friday. Uh, the guys start at 7 in the morning, do a 7 to 4, and then we do a 7 to 4 on that Saturday. Once in the spring and once in the fall. Come mm -hmm. back the weekend after the town wide yard sale. Can communities take care of the salaries for that? or? Uh, I don't know where Kathleen or where they well, take that from. I know the dumpsters. And what is Bill looking to say here? He's saying not to provide the service. Yeah. But what a lot of them do is the White Township does it this way, the Township, Hermione Township has done this. You have the residents pick up, they come here, pick up a voucher, they take the stuff directly to the landfill. That way there's no cost to the town whatsoever. And that you say people leave in the spring and the fall. All week long, a resident can go as long as they have the voucher. Like they would come to Kim and say, I'm a bring with resident, here's my proof. She provides them with a, I know more work. She yeah, provides them with a voucher and they take it directly to the landfill and that's it. Yeah, but how far is your residence from the landfill? Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's true. <laughs> and the landfill doesn't build a municipality for that? That's true. But if yeah. there's options, and if they don't want to get rid of their garbage because they don't want to drive that far. Well, my question is, how much? what is he looking to save? Or what's the dollar amount? I mean, he hasn't put a dollar amount. Well, I mean, if they go to the county, though, with this voucher, who do we get a bill from the county for the voucher? Okay. Yeah. How much? Based, I don't know. It's based, based on, on the tonnage. Based on weight? On tonnage. Yeah, it's probably weight. The weight of the car. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you, for what we, for what you might say, for the, yeah, the problems you're going to have with people dumping along the road, it's not worth it. That, that, that would be the other thing. Yeah. 
Uh, that would be my opinion. So what you're going to end up having thrown on, on uh, farm fields and stuff because you're not providing it, it's not going to be worth it in the long run. Yeah. I'm just wondering what's the dollar amount he's So, Frank, your, your question is how much does it cost the township? Well, he's saying get rid of it, but what does that save us? That's my question. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have to come with a number. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know. I have no idea what he's getting at here. Are you, are you uh, about three, three guys here working? It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or just Friday and Saturday? It's just a Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so so let, it's, it's, so two hundred four hundred dollars a week in a Saturday. So Bill's question, Bill's question is, or Bill's statement is, we need to eliminate the spring and fall bulk pickup, bulk garbage pickup. I don't think he was aware so of that. come to us, or the school, or, or here. Yeah. Yeah. The old school, they drop off their stuff. Right. Yeah, so there's no significant cost savings. Yeah. Yeah. And what do they say? We have to pay five, ten bucks to go? Right. All right. So you answer this question. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so here's the long and short of it. Behind the old school, all the residents go up there and drop their stuff off. They, they drop off a 10 or $20 fee, okay, to operate that mm -hmm. process. These guys consolidate. And then do what with it? All what? By someone else. County comes down and... also get recycling tonnage credit for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there's, there's, there's tight control over that. All right. I don't think it's that expensive. No. No, especially if, I mean, and, and like I said, you have to have people throwing stuff along the road if they can't get rid of it. I go shopping over there. It's a lot of good stuff. Where is the, where is the DPW line out of here? So I guess to wrap up, we need some yeah. parts. Yeah. 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 This is the number she would like to twenty six thousand and she would get back there. We only go one full time guy. I don't need a part time guy there to help you with some of the stuff that we have to be in one year now. Okay, is it one to two part timers for the summertime beneficial to help out there? Yeah, especially when we get into classroom and stuff, uh we're not gonna cost that stuff before five man job instead of rotation. How many uh, the storm drain? The storm. Yes. What's your number? Ten, twenty. 10, 20, what, to rebuild this year? Yeah. Yeah, well, we got we got some that's got some frames and stuff that would be full of rebuilt. We got big holes around. And then we went through, we did 20 some that's just what we call adequate rock. Mm -hmm. Getting ready. It's, we're supposed to paint yeah. stone crossing the green bridge road and let me scan it. And we did minor repairs where we don't have to cut the road open or have a hole right after we do the service. So that guy's put there that there and we do the same thing. So in the area last year we did 35 to 40 trains in there. And so I think we can put that many top more. Some are going to be total repairs and that's that equipment kind of there is what I need to do to fix them. The whole train was broke. I have a couple out with them cars that are look like they're falling into the ground. The top layer is blocked and open the So you have in your operating expenses stormwater system and sinkhole repairs. Mm -hmm. And that includes the concrete inlets. There's ten of them. Uh lintel. That's that's a lintel is I'm that, sorry. That's a piece. Put in a solid piece to help 
Those, those are the ones that are really okay. And then there's risers over. We get over free cash. We put a twelve inch riser on it, and it's more secure and stuff like that. This here is all the supplies that I would need, and plus I just estimated down here when you get down bulk cement delivery. It's about seven hundred dollars for ten yards. That's a dump. That's a double. We we used. I think I used about six yards. We had a big hole open up on uh, Dory Place last year. Then we went around to a couple others. We used six to seven yards of bulk concrete to fill sinkholes. One thing with the sinkholes that I'm not going to say that we're not going to get any, but mm -hmm. we haven't had such a wet year. Winter wise, all the snow packs melt away, all the ground waters. But I'm not saying it's not not gonna open up, but I think there's a lot less opportunity over the past that I've worked for the town to can dry winters that help save in the sinkholes and stuff in the But well, I gotta have some kind of money there to just take the needs of that truck that way. Okay. Anybody else to go? Anything else to go? The, uh, no. under, under that, though, right there in the same area there, I, I show installing four drains and cross pipes to Rickline Hill Road that estimated of we do the work plus $5,500 in, in pipes and material and stuff. That, that could possibly be pushed off until budget's more friendly. And stuff like that, and uh, and being Kathleen, even though we need some kind of winterized uh, winter budget rock salt material and stuff here, Mother Nature's been friendly at us for there. My estimate of sixty-seven thousand dollars for rock salt for this winter was for nine hundred ton of gun. I have not used nowhere near that amount. Um, so right now, two thousand sixteen, <laughs> January one. The present, we've expended nineteen thousand two hundred dollars in rock salt. Right now, I have in stock approximately two hundred fifty to three hundred tons. So, if we have any more, no more snow <coughs> this year, that's a good starter for November, December. I estimate probably three storms there in stock. Storms and so. But we can't predict that. But the 900 tons, my estimate was, off of the last two winters, we used 850 ton one year, 839 ton the year before, and salt went up almost 13 or 14 dollars a ton from the previous, from the 2014-15 budget our uh, uh, co-op. So that's why that amount was so much. That price is the same no matter when we order, right? Uh, no, that, that price is good. They started October 1st, or November 1st goes to end of October. They'll rebid it for this coming year and stuff. And I think, I think since there was low salt, I think the price is going to drop. That's here. I've seen it go up and down. So we got enough to get to that point, and then I think we have enough. If we have no more snow, I don't have to go, and I over the weekend didn't have to and dumped it all off. Um, we got enough to get us started in winter. Well, depends how many snows. Right. The, well, it uh, should be certainly yeah. after October. Yeah. So. One, one question, Joe. You you started out saying that you spend a lot of time administrative stuff, phone calls, contracts, dealing with. Issues on on uh, on projects and whatnot, project management type stuff, administrative type stuff. How much? I mean, is there enough? We're kind of looking at this last year. Is there enough administrative work that you yeah, that's the handle that can be offloaded onto a coordinator type role? Someone in here who can double as as your assistant. I mean, that was the goal was to have you, you know, with the the software, have you have an assistant and whatnot. I don't know. Is there? Well, it all depends on if what that assistant. That assistant's here. I found that besides being in the office, I got to be out in the field. 
a lot. I, I kept an eye on the, the lawn uh, guys going around checking, make sure they were following. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We really had an issue with sports fields and stuff like that. There's a lot of a lot of meetings outside of here. Meeting on uh, there's a spot that one. Meeting with the heating air conditioning guys around outside here. And, and it all depends on uh, what their scope was. If they're if they're if it's a dual role job, if they're actually mm-hmm. showing something in another department and that that they can't leave their phone. I don't know if there's any question of that if they're in, in that middle there still have to be a field work out there. Well, they would help offset your work for, for getting contracts put together for doing the phone calls, follow-up on, and the maintenance on that. They wouldn't be out going out in the field. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's well, reserved for you. Some of, that stuff, and a lot of that, some of the stuff that I do is ordering parts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That there is, I don't know if that person would be versed enough to... Hey, like thanks. Here. Uh, a beef, beef basin inlet. Yeah. I say, order me a beef basin inlet. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm on yeah. Amazon.com yeah. looking for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, so yeah, it, it would obviously have to be someone who's who's well versed in that, you know, yeah. to help you out. Okay. Hey, Joe, on, on the yeah. budget, under other expenses from page two, I don't know if you have it in front of you, um, went from and I'm sure you've explained this, but I missed it. But it went from 60, 56760 to 164,000. Where? It's uh, <coughs> almost on the bottom of page two. 164,000. Uh, under other expenses? Under, under other expenses? Uh, you wanted, you asked for 164, but last year you only, they budgeted 56,764. Correct. Well, that budget that budget was established before I took over um, as upper. So I don't know where that that number comes from. But there was also out of that O and E, they showed a forty. I think there was forty five thousand dollars in what was called a road overlay budget. My stuff in my crack seal, that's where the crack sealing came from last year. The asphalt repair stuff, that was all in the road overlay line under a capital line, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that and the 59, we're getting it to $100,000. And that didn't show a lot of vehicle maintenance and stuff. And the reality at the end of last year was we spent 84000 in your account. We spent the year. Yeah. Okay, so last year you're saying it was really eighty four thousand. Which is spent in Rose O E, yes. And then with the road overlays account they budgeted forty two five and spent thirty five thousand. <laughs> Do we have is that in our old budget that was handed out at the beginning of the year? The road overlay is Yeah, paid or charged. I didn't do paid or charge this year. You'll see this more complete next year just because of all the transferring that I had to do at the end of 15. Mm-hmm. It just made it too crazy to try to go back and do all this. But you'll see it next year. But I, I do have my budget printout of what was actually spent. I can give you that. So what was spent in, and how, how does it correlate to this sheet? In road overlays. You got streets and roads. Is that what we're talking about? Streets and roads. We spent eighty-four thousand. Is that salary and other? That's just only. That's just other. Eighty-four thousand. Yeah. Okay. What was salary? Salary's above it. Two forty-eight. Huh? Spent. Yeah. So what you're getting, Frank, is is the what was spent. Oh, okay. So that was what was budgeted. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we don't have. Okay. And that's the only thing DPW in front of us controls here? Or is there parks and playgrounds somewhere else? I have yeah, parks and playgrounds under the buildings. There's a recreation and education. And, and that's not recreation. There is a camp parks and playgrounds. So we have to, we did some repairs to swings last year. Mm-hmm. We have to get the, the mulch underneath the fall areas, which 
I already have orders for this year and maintenance and stuff of the parts and playground. All right, so page three of six. It's under recreation and education, maintenance of parks. Is that what Joe's referring to? Yep. So that went from 14 to 40. Is that the lawn cutting? Yes. All right. But that's 40K, which is the lawn cutting, 20 of which is the school portion of it. That's yeah. what you noticed. Okay. Oh, yeah, yep. Bill was asking about that. Are we getting reimbursed by the school? I think Bill had a question. No, apparently. No. That's, that's oh, but I believe is there is there there's a contract correct? Yeah. How and I I asked for if we get copy is it we the second in three years or is this the final year coming up? <coughs> second. So what so what's the twenty grand? You're right. In just parks and playgrounds last year we spent sixteen thousand. So we, I really need to see where that mowing is going to come in at and possibly even add to that number. So you budget high for just <laughs> as we had a big insurance uh, checklist last year what had to be fixed. So Joe, it's a shared service to mowing. So I would think we're both contributing. Is is that not the deal? Well, I'll just help the shared service. So what? The use of school gymnasium. Ah, that's the term. That's the okay. Like that. That's the trade off. And also, yes. part, another part of trade off is the DPW salts the lot, the parking lots and roadways of the school. We don't plow, they have a plow contractor, but we use our salt and our truck, our men, to salt when we go out the route. And then let us use the fields and the gymnasium and yeah. stuff. Okay. <laughs> and the. Uh, Recreation salaries and wages. That was the position we created last year was for Sherry. Yes. Or two years ago, I can't even remember. Last year. That was to control, that was to rein in all of the spend uh, for recreation. And it, it basically gets them in compliance with the financials. That's and the that's stipend she's receiving? The fi it's salaries and wages, the 1500 Yeah. And that's working good. Isn't that the one where she's doing oh, yeah. purchase orders during a day? My only thing, and this is a policy decision, I would have it come from the Recreation Trust Fund, but that's not my determination to make. Ah, okay. Yeah, so how much is in the Recreation Trust Fund? 40000 40000 mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a shock. Well, what did you think it was? Frank, the horrors we saw. Forty thousand is a is a blessing. It went straight up after change in management. It's good to know that the kids, the money money parents are paying is going to the kids' uh, activities. How, how do we change that? Just re budget it. Or? Yeah, we just take it out of the from budget and take. Um, do you have to run that by the recreation people? We'll say it's their money, of course. So, you let me know. Good luck, Will. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have any more questions. And other expenses for rec, what, what is that? A thousand. I just threw that in there. God bless. Bless. There was an 850 charge. What was that for? That was for the 501c3. Yeah. So we don't need it? We don't need it. Okay. Yeah, that's a one-time. That's a one-time deal. Yeah. What page and what, what? Where are you? Page <laughs> three. Other expenses. Yeah, bless you. Under uh, tariffs and wages, recreation. That's kind of more. Other expenses. I've contributed. Page uh, three. This one thousand. Yeah. Oh, all right. That was a one-time. Thousand bucks, man. Good to go. Good to go. Anybody else to go? Do they need to do? And I'm only speaking up because I have five hundred five more people to have our nine ninety. Paperwork and stuff that cost the fire company a thousand to fourteen hundred dollars a year by our cabin. Do they have separate cabins that they handle? I know because I handle our paperwork to our. Does recreation have a separate accountant? Well, is that what you're yeah, asking? To, to handle five hundred one c three has to file a nine ninety every year by May fifteenth. This is where. We talked about this kind of when I first started here. I get very confused as to 
Is your recreation, is it separate from the town or is it the town? Is the commission is the town? The recreation commission is part of the town. Okay. The 501c3 is a completely separate entity. Why the recreation commission is by the town? The Booster Club is the town. That's right, and that's, a, that's separate. Yeah. That's completely separate. So, so the 501c3 so is separate. Than the the is the no. no, not okay. at all. Fine. <laughs> The other portion we are, and that's why we got Perfect. someone, uh, we got Cherry in, in, uh, in there to keep keep it compliant. Great. And there's rules, you know, you, you can't pay the, the referees in cash anymore, you know, all that all that noise. We still do. I, but at least we have coverage. At least it looks good. All right, I'm, I'm done with that recreation. Is there anything else on this budget that is Joe's domain? Mm -hmm. Buildings and grounds. Buildings and grounds. Which is where? Some of that probably be improvements. Give me the uh, page number. Some of the considerations for down the police department, open the hallways, changes the doorways, and stuff like that. What, what page, guys? What page? Uh, that should be a separate. separate oh, here it is. Okay. No, it's no, it's just uh, all right. First page, three, four from the bottom. Public buildings and grounds. So sixty-one thousand to sixty-two thousand. That covers other expenses. Is that in here? Are those projects in here? So it looks like a lot of this is capital. Um, the record store building we did last year in the capital ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, that key fob entry system that's coming out of that capital ordinance. I don't know if this, the renovations to the PD, that's not. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Can you find out? Where's his list? Where's the 62? It's in his packet. Help me. Where is it? Is it on the Capitol? Buildings around maintenance and improvements. Okay. So this one sheet, he's got 10 grand and then a, a total of 9,200. Parks and playgrounds, or buildings, grounds, and general maintenance. He has $9,200. We have sixty-two thousand. There's a second one. There should be a second sheet with new construction. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
think 34 comes off. We and, and, and we budgeted 30, So 18 comes out. Okay. So we got minus 50, minus 5,600, minus 18,000. What else? Fuel pump management system. Was that capital? Yeah, we did fuel dispensing system. Yep, 10 grand. We have yeah. 25,000 for that. So what do I subtract? on this sheet of paper, 10 or 25? I think just the 10. You think that's only a plus 10,000? 10, 10, I got yeah. some, I got some <laughs> other prices, but it's not a, it's a system that, what is that you have now? a car, you yeah, turn it on, each yeah. department, you track by department, uh, that $25,000 was given to a system that yeah, you put in expense X amount of gallons within a 24 hour period. Yeah. I think yes. maybe this is the thought for at least try to track it by the market where a car yeah, he's is taking it out, though. And right now, there's no the security system on that at all. Okay, nice. Right now, Jim, you can walk back there, turn on the gas pump, and pump the gas pump. Yeah, every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, at least with a card system and a little keypad system and an update for the pumps, it's more secure than a swipe card. Put in a social security number or your PIN number. So okay. You know who put the gas in and... All right. So if you guys want a basic system for fuel control, it's 10, ten, ten, to ten grand. $10,000. 10 grand. That's what we need to do. We put twenty five into capital. So you can take ten grand off of this sheet. E either way, whatever way you want to go. All right. You can take 10 grand off of this sheet for the here and now, and we make the adjustment of 15 in capital if you want to go with the basic system, or wipe out 25 grand altogether if you don't want to go with the system. What, what do we need? Are, are we moving ahead with this police department renovation? Because that's not in anywhere. Uh, uh, understood, but l let's take the 10 grand off of here first. Okay. okay. So we got 10, another 10 grand knocked off because it's in capital. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, I'm just working off of this 146 number. Now go through the other things. What do you want? Renovations to the police department, 7,500. Does that include what's going on up here? No. How much is that? That is, we're at, I think we're a little under. Yeah, we have got a new door. And once again, that, that price for the police department is in-house labor. That is materials. Labor done by the DPW. It's, inclu it's including materials. That's, that's just the materials. That doesn't include our labor. <coughs> the material only, okay. And what is it? What, what are we doing for? What's 75? Like the furniture? Stand in the hallway, open a wall, create a new wall, uh, steel fireproof door, uh, replacing a door, a fire, uh, putting another door on another office, uh, in closing, making the door close up to the top of the steps, and creating that as a, uh, um, mm -hmm. a police, uh, police officer exit entrance and Exit and entrance only. Have the public come in from the two door, doors here and go down the steps and create another office in the what's the existing chief's office. Divide that up to create a possible secretary office. So the police take over the whole basement. Just about the whole basement, except for a little down the bottom steps, reception area, and the kitchenette space there. Okay, but that office there, that was CFO. That's encapsulated into the wall, square okay. it off, and taking it another office, an office for the police. All right, so. Because the back storage room back there isn't legal, correct? Back storage room. In the police station where the. Uh, correct. Uh, anything, uh, that's, a, that's a utility room. No storage should be in a electrical, uh, electrical utility room at all. 
no storage should be in there, all electrical devices and stuff like that should be, that should be the room, and that's all it should be in there. Okay. So you got 7,500 plus labor? Yeah, the, the labor would be into the daily work of the DP run. I'll just say, I'm going to say probably two to three weeks worth of work straight. With one guy, some of it being two guys. So even if you put two guys on it for uh, three weeks or 40 hours a week times three, one twenty to forty. Yeah, the whole job that grand. Okay. All right. T five software and system per door cost thirty. What, what's that? Sixty five hundred dollars. What is? This, that's the system instead of uh, key all the issues with the keys and combination and codes and this and that. Very plain and simple. T five. You can control access in and out of the doors with a little electronic pump. You know, break right down to the township committee, any board members, and then when it turns up, so they chase them around for a key and this and that, go to the computer, lock it. You put a file of 50 cent deposit into your fob. You don't return it. We got your five dollars and fifty cents. We buy a new fob, program it. Next guy use it. Okay. Uh, are any of these costs, like the police department, is that um, capital? It could be, but we'd have to, to include it. It's not included in the existing money that I have. These are new projects. <clears throat> T5 is not capital. Ladies' room, not capital. DP, replace DPW, garage door, and opener, main yeah, building. That, that's about ready to fall off the building back there on the main building. Can we cross? Is that insurance? Uh, no, it's just wear and tear age, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Different, different thing. All right. Now, we took off the 5,600 for some reason. I guess that's... That was door openers on the... Oh, burned out. On the burned out. All right. I, I crossed off the... The uh, septic. I crossed off the fuel. Replaced man, man doors. Did, did we do this right? What's that? The man doors? No, I did not get the <coughs> man doors onto the DPW or the firehouse. So right. We ran out of time. An HVAC heat pump. That's this thing outside that we eyeballed and it was frozen? And we got a, an insurance claim. I don't know if I got checked with the insurance guy. We turned an insurance hurricane or a um, winter storm. Jonas really did a damage on it with the snow and stuff. So I turned it in, and then another grace was that the president declared that, and I have a meeting tomorrow at 1 o'clock at OEM, and we'll find out what percent we're going to get reimbursed back from the FEMA uh, application, because I submitted preliminary numbers to the county for the declaration. So I have a meeting tomorrow up at OEM, actually up at the vote tech for the paperwork and the application for reimbursement for our expenditures during uh, the blizzard. Okay. Storm supposed to win storm. So usually, this usually it's about 75%. And that, <coughs> that $8,000 to replace that and our $1,000 deductible, I added to damages to the building yeah. by the storm. Okay, so we started with 146. I got 50, 60, 78, 84, around 83, 84 thousand dollars. So 146 minus 84 gets you to the 62. Yeah. Got this, this, two separate things. The record, the, the record store is saying you got 30000 for renovations to the police department and the key fob you're going to have to take out of either the current fund or capital. That 62, you spent that last year without, this was your capital stuff, right? Not your normal operating. So it's like we're two separate things. 
Well, I, I don't understand. You're saying on page one of this, this is just the municipal budget. <coughs> page one has 61,800. Is that capital? No, that's your current fund normal budget. Okay. Joe's write up, he's talking about capital items. You know. We don't have that in front of us, right? Yeah. No, no, we don't have the capital budget in front of us. No, I know what he has. It's titled Building the Ground Maintenance, Repairs, and Improvements. This is just. Okay. This is 146. Everything on here is capital? It could be, potentially, yeah. Okay, so police repairs, these. these. Renovations and stuff. It's modifications. Okay, so what makes up the 62? Buildings and grounds and stuff there. The electric bill under the buildings and grounds. Yeah. The um, gen janitorial supplies, yeah. keeping the place yeah. clean. Mike. Um, there's a whole list under buildings and grounds. Uh, it's the operating budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now my my operating budgets and stuff like that, and just estimates of some of the things that I know I expended. There's others that were, like I said, I don't see the electric bill. I don't see the. Uh, understood. Other stuff. All I'm trying to do, Joe, is to justify the $62,000 number. And I think what i got to do is look at the operating expenses, and it's a subset of this list. Yeah. Spent 56000 last year. How much? 56000 Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this would be a, not a bad time to refresh me on um, what this represents. Is it? We have. I know there's two caps, right? Mm -hmm. So when you say we're 123 over, that's that's. that's the expenditure cap. That's your salaries and wages and operating expenses. Right. Your levy cap includes your debt service, capital improvements that you want to do. Um, and that's all that will apply to you at this point. And capital improvements. Mm -hmm. So that levy cap or the debt service and capital, it's not reflected in here? Correct. That's a separate spreadsheet that you're going to provide? Okay. So if we did nothing. Mm -hmm. The cost of doing nothing, I love it. If we did nothing and took this, what would it be in terms of an increase in taxes? You can't. I can't take this. And it's you over. Have, you have to cut no. 120. The way this is yeah. right now, you have to cut 123,000. Yep. We're over and after we cut the 123,000. And after we cut the 123,000. And how much would taxes doing? go up based upon that? If that we just. Sense. We haven't even gotten to the revenue piece, how much surplus we're going to use. This is just getting under the expenditure cap. Okay. So this budget represents a salaries and four million. What's the total of it? It doesn't matter. I don't have in there like the um, reserve fund collected taxes and all that. That's an auditing function. They work with that number based on your collection percentages. This is just your operating and salaries and wages. So right. So that's why the total. This is just the state telling us you're over. You better cut it. Okay. So. We put $62,000 in here for Joe's operating expenses of $163,000. i am sorry, what? So I'm trying to, I'm, I don't see a correlate. I, I can't take this sheet of paper and drive it into the budget. I don't know what you're doing for the $62,000. I can't figure it out. 62000 of buildings and grounds is electric bills. Light bulbs for the building, mm -hmm. maintenance that was done during the year. Last year, I know down in the police department, we had uh, oh. the sewer pump oh. thing oh. issue. That expenditure, the 62000 was what was expended yeah. last year yeah. on buildings and grounds to maintain 
Lights. Like minor things, cumulative janitor supplies. Stuff like oh, okay. That. Okay. That, this that, isn't projects. Mine is a capital improvement project to consider for this year. All right. So the sixty-two thousand is light is electrical. The pump downstairs with the alarm system not for septic, so we didn't have a flood or a big insurance claim again. We had breakdowns of the building. Okay. And then this 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 one sixty four correlates to one sixty four as your other expenses for streets and roads. Yes, because we yeah that's separate the building the ground projects and stuff like that. Like I said, you had in capital from last year the record storage bill. I got an updated price. No, 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 Joe, no, no. We're dealing with expense and capital. Yeah. Okay. So, and Kathleen, this is where we're getting off track. Page two, 164,000, streets and roads, other expenses. Yeah. That is this sheet of paper I'm looking at. DPW budget operating expense. Yeah. yeah. Right? 164 ties out to 164. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day in Greenwich. The capital plan that Joe, that we were going through, isn't even on here. No. Okay. That's right. It's so not even on here. Yeah, it's not on there. This, this is just preliminary numbers for everything that you right. have. This is numbers that we have to cut. We're not going through the budgetary stuff that. I don't even really want to. I didn't want to even talk about capital tonight. Okay. It's part of the levy cap. I told you I wanted to do work on the expenditure. Cap. So we're just yeah. working on the expenditure. I, I under, that's, yeah, yeah, but we were going down that. I don't know why we were going down that path. It's it's it's, it's this 164 is Joe's projects for this year. It's preliminary as to what Joe is talking about in the future, but we're not here to discuss what's going to happen right now. Yeah, no, I. All right, so we're, so we're good to go with that, so you're going to come back on that. So, sorry for the confusion. Okay, is there anything else? <laughs> no, actually, I think you did a really good job, Joe, on putting this together. So, I appreciate the work I went for it. Jerry, yeah, you're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Some people did better than others, so I'm confident. No, it, it's very nice. It, it is comprehensive. Thank you, Joe. Gary? All right. Let's go. You got 10 minutes. 10 minutes, you got it. Five. Sounds good. All right. Well, what we have here is, I guess we want to start off on uh, what we have for these budget salary and wages right now. Can you come place first? Are you asking for thirty thousand on top of the eighty five by that footnote in the bottom, Jerry? Um, no, eighty five total. We had fifty five last year. Okay. Um, we had fifty five last year. Where's the thirty? Where's on the operating expense? Well, unless mine's backwards. Okay. You said do page one first, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's gonna be under capital anyway, right? The third, the thirty thousand. Where's, where's the thirty thousand on this then? On the uniform. Allowance is only five thousand. He's requesting eighty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Last year's budget was fifty-five thousand. Right. So it's an increase of thirty thousand dollars. But it says new uniforms, equipment, and education. So it's broken down somewhere under those. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, yeah, I'm saying there's not 30,000 one spot. So that's Correct. an increase in the uniform yeah. allowance is up to 5,000. Right. Okay. And then equipment is up to 15,000. Okay. Correct. Right. Okay. So that would go in for anything for, you know, uh, uh, rain supplies and right. things like that. Yeah, and your whole training budget is only going to be like 10,000? Well, that's what we do. Uh, I mean, we bumped it up, I think, about $2,000. I think mm -hmm. it was 8000 possibly last year. I know you said you have a lot of training to do. Yeah, so, so we needed... But some of the schools are free, too, right? Uh, there, there's some free only... Well, I'm not questioning it's too much. I think yeah, it sounds too much. <laughs> I, I, yeah, exactly. Well, and my other thing was, too, is I don't know, you know, there's a lot of question marks here in what we're doing with hiring and uh, new officers. Because once you do it, um, you know, the officers are going to have to be trained. Uh, you know, active shooter is one of the classes that they uh, must attend now as for uh, AG guidelines across group office. 
go there to, you know, probably $700 class or so, uh, that's going to cost us ammunition just to go to the class as well. Mm -hmm. So depending on how many offers we to get, uh, how many trainings, because any, any training class can range, you know, from $50 to $1,000. Yeah. So it just depends on what we need and, and how we get it. And I just ask for guys, at the beginning of the year is what we usually do and how we've done it in the past is put in a um, uh, requisition to what you would like to do, what you're interested in, what types of trainings, other than our mandatory trainings that we have every year. Right. Uh, you know, firearms, <laughs> firearms mass training, <coughs> alpha test research, all those uh, types of classes as well. And sometimes, you know, unfortunately, they roll where guys roll up and we need to get in there either for out time or overtime. Any other questions? Next time you do it, I would appreciate the last year's next to it, then I would have understood the 30,000 easier. And you just keep saying it was 55, 55, 55. Well, but I mean, instead of keeping on it was 55 or 35, I'd like to know where the 30 was going. So next time, give me the comparison, please. I didn't have last year, I wasn't here, so I didn't have it. You have no way to retrieve it? You have it, Terry? The only thing is, I would have to. If we could work on something to find it. Well, I don't know, but I mean, you're yelling at me 30,000, 55, 85. I'd like to know what the 30 was and how it's broken well, down. I, I had no sub accounts. I had none of that information. I came here in June. Yeah, when I took over in July, we kind of just. So how do you know it's up 30? Because the, the state doesn't break it down by sub accounts. It's up 30 as a whole. It went from 55 to the request of 85. I don't know what the sub account thinking was back then. Any questions? Any questions? And the only thing I just, if I were just touching this, I know you guys were talking about capital at a later time, but just to let you know, the output test on here, the equipment, uh, possibly going to a new one next year. I just met with the uh, output test coordinator who was here today. Uh, uh, taking care of ours, recertifying it, and they are kind of in the air with it. They don't know what company they're going to go to. They don't know if they're going to keep uh, Drager. Uh, if they do keep Drager, uh, we may get a little refund from turning back our old uh, alpha test. Uh, as of right now, they told me they want to $20,000 from both this year or next year. So we could be looking at 2017, 2018. You know how that kind of goes, both being in that area. Uh, we're just going to wait for the state to tell us and who takes the contract and bid on that. And they're going to basically be the ones to tell us when we are going to get this uh, new machine. Are they, are they going to do the mass order in it like before and say, mm -hmm. hey, we got it from the spot right here? I believe so, yeah. I think everything was pretty much set for everything. Uh, well, as at 20 grand. That's what I was been told uh, numerous times when our guys went through the research. Yeah. And again, uh, Chris Morse was here from the state police today. Um, and I went over that with him real, uh, real quick, briefly. So he told me just to throw that, throw that number out there as a twenty grand uh, capital expense. So what, what um, is in? It's like a hundred and twenty something thousand increase in salaries and wages. Is that what I'm saying? Spent yeah. Last year. Is that from the on the, the budget thing last year? $992,000, Actually, if you're going to ask, if you're going to ask for more information, maybe that wouldn't be bad either. What we spent next to these things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did we get a column of what was actually spent? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, so we actually spent 992. Okay. So then you're not talking. Why was it so off? I know you've mentioned this before. Is there, is there a reason why we budgeted? The budget was so far off it was spent? I wasn't here, but at the time I thought I understood it that the, there wasn't enough overtime budgeted. But I don't know that. I don't know that. I wasn't here for that either. And you can only give us what it's here for. Jim, any recollection of... At the time, we weren't getting many 
our budget requests were going unanswered. We weren't hearing anything out of um, Hummer at the time. We took a stab at what would it take to cover the police department. And that, that's what we came up with. We also allocated... So the department had never gave an estimate? No. We had asked for the budget several times. That was at the point when we weren't allowed to communicate with our police department. So we took our best guess. We also parked dollars because we knew it wasn't going to be on. We parked dollars in other accounts. So you see, I think 45000 was was put away in uh, in a uh, sub-account, another ten grand in another account, probably totaling maybe about seventy five, eighty grand that we just tucked away because we knew better. We knew it wasn't going to it wasn't going to work. But we weren't getting any information out of it. So. And the other thing you're looking at when you're looking at the offer salaries now, don't forget, uh, if you're putting their, uh, they've been out of the contract since 2013, obviously. Uh, you you remember, uh, started negotiating with the guys. Uh, so there's uh, possibly new numbers that will come in, percentages uh, based on contract calls. Uh, so that's kind of out of my hands uh, as knowing what the numbers are going to be, what percentage these guys are going to get, stuff like that, retro, active pay. Uh, so I can't foresee that, and I can't just give you a number on that. Right. I'm giving you off of what we have in the contract now. Uh, also with myself, uh, I know as, as myself as being a salary uh, as of April 9th uh, at the rate of what you have there, uh, that's going to be another talk. I know that was a yearly uh, salary ordinance. So I guess that will have to be also uh, brought up and, and talked about as well. So I'm missing something because I see total potential salaries and wages, 932.415, but on the spreadsheet it's 996. I did this before having okay. that information. And again, there's so many unknowns at this point. Okay. So if we just went from counting the two, there's a thirty thousand dollars savings right there. If we just took his we just took Jerry's number. Say that again? Huh? If we took Jerry's number of nine three two as opposed to nine nine six that's what, one third. What's the what's the savings? Nine nine six to nine three two is sixty grand. Yeah, sixty grand. Sixty four grand. So there's there's your there's sixty four of that one twenty three right there. Oh, so you don't have the new officer. Well, what's your nine three two number contain? Well, that's we kind of came up with again with all the unknowns is we're talking about overtime, um, you know, possibly, right, did we add in here another officer? As of May 1st. As of May 1st, yeah. if you can see the one new officer, possibly have a new officer, uh, starting step here is 50000 And then don't forget, you're going to have to roll in most likely benefits, depending. Uh, right now we have two officers that don't take benefits off of, uh, out of our police force right now. So we came up with that said so something happened to start here by May 1st, you're looking at 33000 for the rest of the year and then plus the benefits. Which is no way you're starting with this. Yeah, exactly. And again, you know, trying to cover all that time, especially when we're talking into the summer months of May, June, July, uh, I came up a rough estimate of where we're going to be at. Because right now we're down to eight guys, uh, seven covering shifts besides me Monday through Friday. Uh, we go to a weekend with four guys working on a weekend, usually only minimal of about four hours if we're trying to do a two-man coverage uh, from a six to ten shift. We're leaving our midnight guy out by himself for a ten-hour period right now. Uh, if we go to the following shift where they only have three men, we have a lieutenant uh, and two patrolmen. My lieutenant is doing most of our secretarial work, so he's kind of off the road. Um, at that time, when you're getting into the summer months, as per contract, two guys are allowed to be on vacation at, at each time. So it doesn't matter what shift you work, as long as you're on that one squad. Uh, two weekends ago, this happened. Uh, I covered overtime 
all weekend. I worked Saturday and Sunday because we had two guys off, and we only had one guy scheduled to work our midnight shift from 10 at night to 8 in the morning. So we had to fill overtime for the rest of the day. Uh, guys are getting burned out with overtime already. Uh, you can see that. And some of these numbers don't actually uh, really come out to it because our guys, in lieu of overtime, are taking some comp time, uh, especially uh, Detective Blazer. He likes to take a lot of comp time, save it for later on for days off, as for the schedule and contract. Uh, you know, he's allowed to do that. Uh, myself, I took a lot of comp time as well. Uh, so those numbers could be uh, different. You know, we'll never have that exact amount. You know, I can tell you that this year we had X amount of number of overtime, but I can't tell you exactly how many were, you know, how much money we spent because the other guys took the comp time. And then maybe later on, did it cause overtime? Possibility for that guy taking a comp day and maybe creating it because as of right now, as per our policy, I was uh, just talking to the mayor, uh, it says that we're allowed to use the comp day as vacation later on, uh, 15 days within the next month. So guys can schedule as vacation time and you can't be denied a vacation time or that comp time as long as you put it in in a certain amount of time. So that's how we're kind of going right now. So when we get to June, uh, I put in there, right now we just have June, July, but I did May as well. We have several guys off in May. And getting hit with some weekends on Saturdays and Sundays with just one officer, as of right now. Plus, also, if these guys are working all this overtime and they're cashing in for comp time, they're going to be maxed out of comp time. They're going to, exactly. They're going to be, well, they're going to be maxed out with comp time, but they're going to be taking their comp time. But again, you're going to be burned out with guys. We're getting call outs where guys are working more than their 16 hours. They can't come back in. They need eight hours off. So it's, it's getting hard right now to really, I mean, we're stringing through some some weekends here, and especially last weekend, uh, we had three call-outs. We had three DUIs over the weekend. There were uh, Two of them were car accidents. Uh, one we had to take for flood. Had to get a search warrant. So, uh, you know... You're, you're uh, in between shifts. Is eight hours off in between your shifts? Yeah, if you work 16 hours, <coughs> if you work a max of 16 hours as per our contract, you need eight hours off before you return uh, to work. Oh. If you work, uh, you know, 12, 14 hours, Usually we do, I think, a four to six hour kind of thing. I don't think it's, we have it actually written in stone on that, but I could double check our time management. Uh, but that's how we usually do it. We, we could work a maximum of 18 at six off. Yeah, we can only do, we do 16 with the max of eight off. Right. So. Any other questions? <coughs> so the, the up of 30 grand is to cover new officers in terms of the uniforms, equipment, and, and education. What, what type of equipment are we talking? Well, we're talking as a <coughs> uniform. Yeah. I mean, dollar-wise. Uh, this was maybe, last two hires were 2010. I think we looked at about 56 to 5,800. So you may want to round that up a little bit six years later. Okay. You know, so I'm not 100%. Not I can run that uh, through where we get our equipment and get a, and get a ballpark figure for you. We got the license plate readers last year. Correct. They're operational. Uh, as of right now, it's uh, it's mounted. All the hardware is in. Uh, Jewel and uh, our distributor that we bought the license plate reader from, we're having a little uh, problem on the back end of the server with a security kind of problem. They squared it away. Uh, Jeff Jewel just stopped in here today to let me know. I contacted Tara Rockhill from the state police who lets us in with the seizures unit. And she said we should be squared away and ready to go. I uh, just need him to come in, set up a date to train us. I already have the policy and procedures ready for that as well. We've got to get that out to the guys once we get it up and running. But I, I'd say by next month, next okay. month we should be. Uh, and you got computer, you got computer updates, technology, fifteen grand. Yeah, I was. Um, I just spoke with Jeff on that as well uh, for the department. Uh, we're working on some outdated uh, computers and equipment. Uh, we're going to go through that list. Uh, the other thing is we, when we transferred over to our new records management system, it's internet-based. Uh, we were never internet-based before at this time. Uh, again, we jumped on with InfoShare, and it's county-wide. So it's an internet-based program. Uh, some of our computers here are Microsoft, and they still use an XP, which I guess I'm not a big computer guy, but they don't uh, not update. Yeah, it's not a support, so they can be maybe breached. Uh, haven't had that problem yet, you know, but uh, we just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. All of our computers are secure, and we don't have to worry about 
anything like that. Does this also include radio upgrades or communication uh, upgrades? Like, um, Is that it? That was one of the things uh, in the office that I'm currently uh, hosting right now. I don't have radio. I don't have any uh, service in there. So I can't hear anything. i got to leave the door open. i got to turn a scanner up. i got to leave the whole door open. And i got to turn that one all the way up just so I can hear uh, our guys on call. Can I have a speaker? No. Uh, no, it, it just sounds like a problem down there. Yeah. It doesn't. It the portable doesn't work. Yeah, no, portable has never worked. And it doesn't matter. We mm -hmm. had a really good one as well. Uh, the more local ones years ago before the county brought these, they were fantastic. Still didn't work downstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing worked there. We just had to get a food for getting cell phone service. And we did that a couple of years ago, so now we have some service. Is it something the county could <coughs> look into getting a booster for? Uh, for Dieter downstairs? I would, I'll would. i ask them, but every time we send in so many complaints on the radios, <coughs> they just kind of, I mean, I'm sure they're getting across the side. Uh, there's a good possibility that I take these portables that the county gave us and I'm just going to put the storage and get the old ones back. It's, it's all for safety issue. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to move, move from that. We have too many dead spots. We can't get out. So. No, 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 no. You, I know. Um, well, we had last year, and I don't know how well it was communicated at the towards the year end, but it was more along the, the license plate readers and a fixed mount reader. Did that get any traction? I mean, we were focused on the mobile one, but... I am not there aware of a fixed... I didn't hear anything other than, you know, what we had, uh, what Poha had, other than the, you know, the red light cameras. As I understood it, <coughs> it was a fixed camera, so you can leave it un unmonitored. You, you don't need a guy, and it's feeding in, and it, and it highlights certain individuals or certain criteria is met, and all of a sudden it's a red light to you guys or something. It's an automated thing. Okay. Well, the only problem I see with something like that, I mean, I, and I'm not fully catching on to it, but the way I'm just kind of hearing it is if we're not in that area. Yeah. Look good in there. Yeah. Well, it, it gets, it goes part of, I don't know the details of it, guys, but it goes part of the dispatch. You know, there's a, it, it's as if there was a guy driving around, mm -hmm. except now you're covering more ground without actually dedicating a guy to... Well, if it's fixed, if you know, that, I think it's fixed and more designed for, like, entries to the Holland Tunnel and the George yeah. Washington Bridge. Yeah, or it takes it out, then the dispatcher can radio to one of the guys standing out there yeah, in the car and tunnel. say, we got yeah, a one somewhere. person, lane seven, that green uh, Mustang, whatever, and he would pull it over. How about the retail areas? If you, you put a, a fixed out there, though, like he's saying, yeah, if he's out, if he's out in 57 and a car goes through that's uh, stolen, Mm -hmm. By the time they get there, yeah. park be gone. And we're just basically going to do what we normally do anyway when we can't get somewhere. <coughs> Contact state police or let these guys know of it, let the uh, toll bridges know. So we'll radio ahead, but mm -hmm. that's what it would be. And, and the way I'm thinking of it, I mean, I don't know if it would actually, the time frame that it would take from this fixed camera to get to either dispatch or say it was somehow linked to our computer. If a guy's not in the car, you know, it's, it's well, the guys in the town is not good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, it's like the system. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think a stationary would serve. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that, that would be. I guess that's more designed for a yeah. choking point going into a tunnel or a bridge. He reads it. Mm -hmm. there, there's poor authority cops right there at all the yeah. booths. And then it would click up on a you know, computer you dispatch, and they'd radio off to a guy saying, Lane 7, uh, that Ford. Uh, Truck coming through who's wanted, or it's here on the terror list, or whatever, and he can pull it over. Newark uses them at the bridges. Anything else? Anything else? No, I, I think seeing comparisons with last year as best we can, knowing that it didn't have much base information in there, um, would, would be helpful. I think I think for DPW, we would have it. it would um, be in there. If I could just add in one thing, I know uh, our car, we were talking about. Kathleen track budget in uh, roughly 40000 I had up here from Ford. I know we just got two new cars. Uh, we got some higher mileage on the other ones. Uh, we took one out of the fleet already, using it as possibly a road job car or something like that. Uh, but I had here for two brand new cars, the same exact ones we got uh, this past year. Uh, five payments for $16,651 uh, a year for two brand new cars. But then again, you got to fully uh, equip them, which I think we came out 
<coughs> some of the numbers, it was right around that $40,000 budget, uh, putting cameras and uh, computers in the car, radar. We can kind of scrap here for some radar units. I did buy two brand new ones for the new uh, the new cars that are uh, that are certified and moving and stationary. So that was a big thing. Some of our other uh, radars right now are not uh, certified for the moving mode, um, but we still use them. And then I did a second option just for one car. And as of right now, one car, uh, I picked the SUV. It's one of our SUVs has about, I think has about 75,000 miles on it or 80,000 miles on it. Uh, 70, 79,958 as of last month. Uh, so I put in for another SUV and you're looking at um, five payments over five years, one payment a year at $8,458. And then to basically equip that car, you're looking roughly just a little under, possibly 18,000. And that quote is as good as a 531. And the 30 grand in vehicle repairs, is that pretty? We were yeah. at what, 25 last year? Yeah, what I'm the, hoping. <laughs> we have to know what we spent there. I'm hoping we're not going any higher than that with the two new cars. I mean, obviously, you're just going to need oil, brakes, tires, normal stuff. Mm -hmm. the first two years. Yeah, we should be pretty good on that. Um, one of the cars out there got a new transmission that was like 3,600 the first beginning of the year. Uh, so we should be. All right. Hopefully nothing really nickel and diamond or major. Twenty three thousand last year. Okay. Jay, just real, um, yeah. real quick. Did they do anything in with the body cameras yet? No. Um. The sun's going to be coming up soon. Yeah, there's there's talks <laughs> on it. Our prosecutor's office has sent out um, information about it. No real policy yet. I think what they have from the AG's office, uh, they're going to look and kind of. I guess just want to say trim a little bit to kind of fit our needs here, uh, but there are no requirements yet uh, to go on to it. Because I know there's going to be a lot of those gray areas of you know discovery over a request on certain stops and uh, you know certain things that we go on the nature of the calls of unattended deaths and you know uh, the family disputes, things like that. That these people aren't going to want their face out there. Or, you know, there's going to be a lot of that kind of red tape we're going to have to cross. Okay. Uh, as of right now, nothing in on that. But I've looked uh, and I've been given with the cameras for the car, they offer the body cams as well. So I do have that um, catalog to say. So I, I wouldn't know where we would be at. But I, what I did find out about that, though, is they're not very expensive to buy right off the bat. It's the storage for the memory, the downloading, the taking them, and the data control on that, I believe, gets pretty expensive. Uh, but I, I don't know any numbers or anything like that. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? So, uh, I have a question. So, when you're talking about the 123 over this cap, as Jim said, once we rectify that, that still doesn't mean we don't have a tax increase for that part Correct. of the budget, right? Correct. Do you know at this point how far over it would be at a zero increase on this part of the budget? I do not have a penny on your tax rate, $29,000. Right. Um, but again, it's going to depend on how much money we're going to use to fund the offset increases in the levy cap portion. Well, let's say we got this. We only we only got it down to the 123. We just we just took care of that, so we're at the we're at the ceiling. At that ceiling, what are we talking about? I don't know. I okay. Really All right. Down. When's our next meeting? Tuesday. Uh, the 29th. Next Tuesday. Yes, sir. Oh. <clears throat> are you able to get us that information by the 29th? What you spent in the O&E. Well, yeah, it, 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 there's a couple of things. One is a read on the, the overall actual, tax impact. Well, and the, one was the actual spent. Yeah, column. the actual spent for 2015. Right. And the second was the tax impact. Are you able to get closer to that, given we take the 123 out? With not, I could work that up based on not including anything in your capital program, nothing. So, I mean, I can do that. 
Yeah, I guess we're trying to figure out, and maybe we can't figure it out now. Yeah, maybe, know, maybe. Trying to figure out how much we got to cut after the 123 to keep us at zero increase. Just what is that number, if it's possible? Yeah, and well, you know, why? So, so we're going to meet again next week. How many other sessions are we going to need to have to get us to the point of understanding the tax impact and capital projects in and around? So, so this meeting we covered just DPW and police. So we got to cover legal. We got to cover, uh, you know, or, or the, the the administration, the clerk, the tax, the. Uh, Animal control, you know, all these other things. So we do that at that second, at next week's meeting. Is that what yeah. our plan is? And then maybe at that meeting we'll start scheduling more. Okay. Let's take one meeting at a time. What you want to do now? <laughs> I'm going to say one thing on the record again. The capital pro projects improvement plan didn't sound like auditor had a good clue as to how to improve did not have a good clue as to how to implement it. I met with Mike tonight. He, we finally figured out the three little words <coughs> that I needed to know. Other Come people's money. School tax. Oh, yes. Does that ring a bell? We were floating the school tax. That's exactly how we did it. Okay. Well, nobody told me that to this point, so now I know that. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Okay. So you know that's, that, that's wanted, his technique. He was using the school use, tax as float for the so next I, year. You want to do that against the first school tax? Apparently, two fifty, two fifty, two fifty every year. Yeah, that's why you can't add. You can't add it and make it five hundred this year. You got to keep it at two fifty. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I don't know why the auditor didn't just pick up on that. It's a very. How would he know that? Just to say, oh yeah, it's the first school tax. But that, that was the conversation. Because yeah, I, right. I told him that. During the meeting. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's, you know, I don't know if he, I was just not saying right, it right, but it was floating the school tax. Open public comment, this initial, initial public comment period is reserved for, okay. I'm not sure. I'm going to speak anyway. <laughs> for the record, anybody have any open public comment? Mrs. Maxine, I, I see that no one's here for public comment. Motion for public comment. Motion. Second. So, motion. Would you motion for to close? To close. <laughs> to close. Yeah. We, we never opened. We, we opened it. We closed it. Okay. <laughs> Open, close, done. Motion to adjourn. Aye. Aye. Uh, I second it. Aye. 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 Oh. Okay. 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 Okay.